going to be solving an interesting problem. We have x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 12. And we're going to find the highest point on this curve. What kind of curve is this? Is this a parabola? Is this a hyperbola? Is this one of those conics? It has an xy term. So what does that mean? So I'm going to show you a graph at the end and we'll find out what the graph of this equation look like. I would like to say function, but it is not a function as you can see, right? Because of the presence of y squared. All right. So to find the highest point, we're going to be using calculus. And don't be scared because calculus basically means that we're going to look at the rate of change of a function. We're going to evaluate at which point this function has a horizontal tangent because that indicates usually the lowest point or the highest point. How do we decide? There's a way to do it as well, which we can talk about. But you, you can tell when I show you the method, we plug in the numbers, and then at the end, we're going to verify with the graph. Okay? Another question that might come up is, can we write this as a function because of the y squared? That's going to give us kind of like a two solutions maybe. Even if there are solutions, how can we find them? Those are good questions, right? We'll try to answer them as much as possible. So, in order to be able to find the highest point, I need to find basically a maximum, right? To find the maximum, I need to differentiate this. But I can't directly differentiate this because y is not written as a function of x. In other words, we're going to use implicit differentiation. We can't do it explicitly. For example, if you are given something like y equals e to the power x or y equals sine x or y equals e to the power sine x, whatever, any combination of these, you could do it. You could find y prime or the y over the x because y is by itself. You can just differentiate. There are rules and you can use them. Integration is harder because you have to reverse the process, but that's another story. But when you have the x and y mixed together, you use what is called implicit differentiation. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then from there, we're going to find y prime. Okay, we're going to extract it. So let's see how that can be done. And then we're going to look at the results and talk about it. So when you're differentiating implicitly, you basically treat y as a function of x, right? I mean, it is a function of x, even though it may not be written all the time cleanly or clearly as a function of x, you can still treat it as a function of x, like you, right? So, and of course, you use the properties like product property, the power property, so on and so forth. And there's one thing that you need to keep in mind. For example, if I'm differentiating x squared, it's just 2x because you bring the power down and reduce. But if it's y squared, it's a little different because we have to use what is called the chain rule. Sounds like a really good rule, right? Just means whenever you differentiate, differentiate like normal, treat it as x, and then, uh-oh, this is a function of x, not just x. So we must multiply by the derivative of y, which is called the derivative of the inside, because inside means the argument, basically, right? Anyway, so that's how you do it. So let's go ahead and using these rules, differentiate this implicitly, okay? That's the term. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of xy, that's a product. The product rule says the derivative of the first function times the second plus the derivative of the second function times the first. The derivative of x is 1 multiplied by y plus the derivative of y is y prime. By the way, when you're given y and you need to differentiate it, it's just y prime, right? You don't need to multiply by y prime again because that will generate an extra one times the first function, which is x. So this part belongs to this. Got it? Plus the derivative of y squared, we just talked about it, 2y, but then don't forget to multiply by the derivative of y, which is the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. And what about the derivative of 12? Oh, that's easy. It's a constant, so its derivative is 0 because constants do not vary and therefore their rate of change is 0. Make sense? I hope it does. Now, let's go ahead and Write this in a nicer way. What I mean by that is 2x plus y. And then we have y prime here and here. So why don't we just go ahead and factor out y prime? And so that way it can look a little cleaner, right? Now, you want to isolate y prime. Remember, 
our goal was to find y prime. So let's go ahead and subtract 2x plus y, y prime times x plus 2y is going to equal negative 2x minus y. If you negate everything, that, that's what happens. And then divide both sides by x plus 2y. Of course, you don't want x plus 2y to be 0. Maybe take a note of that. And then now you will get y prime from here. Uh-oh, we got y prime, but it's just in terms of x and y. Of course, what would you expect, right? This is implicit differentiation. So the result will be a mixture of x and y. So where do you go from here? We're going to find the points where the derivative is 0. And it just means that negative 2x minus y is equal to 0 or y is equal to negative 2x. Awesome. This is a really cool relationship which can help us along with the original equation, right, uh, to find the maximum and minima. Okay, let's replace y with negative 2x. We're going to get x squared plus x times negative 2x. And then if you square negative 2x, you get 4x squared equals 12 x squared, 5x squared minus 2, 3x squared equals 12, x squared equals 4, x equals plus minus 2. Awesome. We're going to look at each case separately. If x is equal to 2, what happens? Let's find out. If x is 2, we're going to replace x with 2 here and here. You're going to get 4 plus 2y plus y squared is equal to 12, and then y squared plus 2y minus 8 equals 0. Now, if you factor this into uh, 4 and negative 2, you're going to get y equals negative 4, and y equals 2 from here. If you plug in x equals negative 2, you're going to get uh, 4 again, but this time you're going to get minus 2y plus y squared equals 12, and this gives us y squared minus 2y minus 8 is equal to 0. This can be factored as negative 4 and 2 from here y equals 4 and y equals negative 2. Now take a look. If we know that y is equal to negative 2x, right, and y is equal to this, so x is basically found by dividing y by negative 2. So x is going to be 2. From here, x is going to be negative 1. From here, x is going to be negative 2. And from here, x is going to be 1. So we have the following pairs. 2 comma negative 4, negative 1 comma 2, negative 2 comma 4, and 1 comma negative 2. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. Negative 2 comma 4. Negative 2 comma 4. Okay, awesome. We got four pairs. Which one do you think gives us the highest point on the graph? Of course, for the highest point, y should be the highest, right? So in this case, it looks like it happens to be 4, right? But how would you distinguish between a maxima and minima? You can look at the second derivative. How do you find the second derivative? Once you find the first derivative, just differentiate this. But this time it's not implicit because you have y prime isolated. So the derivative of y prime gives you y double prime, which is the second derivative. And looking at the second derivative, that's too long. Just find all the values and you can decide which one looks like. But that's too long. Just look at the values that you found and then determine from there. Let me show you the graph real quick because we're going to finish with that. Have you guessed what this graph is going to look like? And if you said... And, oops, yes, before the graph, I want to show you this because, yes, you can solve for y, but there's going to be two solutions. That's why it's not a function. But it's possible you can differentiate both of these and go from there. That would work. And the graph is an ellipse, but not a normal one, a rotated one. Why? Because of the presence of x, y. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.